Well, welcome to Broken Bridge Studios. Today we are going to be uh, talking about the Wen 3420 MIDI lathe. Picked this up on Amazon.com as a uh, starter lathe. I've always been really interested in turning wood. Been watching videos and checking it out. And as an experienced woodworker, this is something that I was really interested in trying. So this seemed like a great way to start. It's a very affordable little lathe. Uh, it's a decent power, as you can see here. It's got about a one-third horsepower motor. It's got an 8 by 12 inch working surface. And really all the basic features you'd be looking for in a standard lathe. The accessories are fantastic. And I really wanted to give you guys an overview of what this, uh, what this lathe offers and some of the uh, basic pieces that come with it uh, so you understand that where we're starting. The goal here is that I really want to get into woodworking. I thought this was a great way to do it. So here's the lathe, spelled out and spread out a little bit. Um, the headstock is solid cast iron, as is the rest of the body, and you're really uh, you're going to be not turning that headstock at all. It's a solid piece, so you're just going to be dealing with the straight throw. The main distance across on the lathe is a little more than two feet wide. It's under about a foot tall. I think it was about 11 inches or so here. Yep, there we go. And really, the working surface that we're really talking about here, you know, it's got a pretty decent footprint. So very easy to fit on top of a bench top or a worktop. We do have that 8-inch area to work uh, across on the face of the equipment, uh, and that movable tailstock allows up to a 12-inch piece of wood to be used. Uh, the tailstock glides very nicely, as does that banjo right there, and everything comes with these great little locking handles, which are nice. It allows you to uh, lock these things down and then turn the handles in the direction you need, but the one downside is, is that they are spring-loaded, but opposite, so you have to pull out on the handle to get it to drop down. No big deal, but it's worth a shot. Anyway, I felt like this tightened up really nicely. I felt the tailstock tightened up really nicely. So I want to talk about some of the other pieces that came with it. Here are the mandrels that came with it for both the headstock and the tailstock. And as you can see here, we've kind of got this first set of mandrels with the teeth compared to the live end. So that is going to go into the headstock. And the idea is that you pound that into the stock of whatever you're working on. You put the live end into the tailstock. You meet your two pieces up and, uh, and then you go. Now you'll notice that that tailstock does have that turnable knob. It allows you to throw that tailstock mandrel out about two full inches. And that's a nice little feature because that means that you can also put attach a chuck or some other features to that and really go to town. This here is the punch out tool and this is going to allow you to pop the mandrels out if they do get jammed in there on both ends. It both works for both the headstock and the tailstock and yet it's also the same tool that you're going to use when you're attaching things to the threaded faceplate. Now the faceplate here is uh, cast iron, uh, it's got those pre-drilled holes, and you can see here it's a little less than 6 inches, about 5 and 3 quarter inches in diameter. Very heavy, very sturdy, and as you can see it's also threaded on the inside. And that's a eighth inch or a 1 8 TPI or 8 TPI threading, so uh, 1 thread or per every, 8 threads per inch is your basic standard there. Um, Using that tool, the punch out tool to lock the spindle into place, it also comes included with this little cast iron wrench uh, locked to the size of that faceplate, and you can use that to tighten down. And the nice thing you'll notice is that that mandrel hole is still open, so you could insert the mandrel again if you needed to, or you can work directly on the faceplate. It has a very slow startup motor, which is nice, it gives you sort of a little pause before it kicks fully in. And it starts off at a very low speed. I want to say it's around uh, 800 RPM and goes pretty high. Uh, it's a good, good lathe to get up to that high speed, especially if you're working with hardwoods and things that need to have a little bit more speed to the cutting edge. I found that this is actually pretty useful. Quick power down, as you notice, and of course, like any good power tool, it has your interlock keys that you can see right there. If you have your old kids around, you might want to pull that out or pop it into a drawer or keep it somewhere safe if necessary. Again, that slow startup motor is a nice little feature. It runs very, very smoothly and it's very quiet. Using that collection tool, that pop-out tool, again, I'm going to lock onto that. I'm going to see here if I can. Come on. Oh, come on. Use your muscles. No, go in the other direction. That's how you tighten it. There we go. So, still learning and that's the point here is that I really wanted to have these videos out there to show off not only with the tools that I'm going to be using but some of the techniques that I'm trying to figure out how to do at the same time like these tool rests it came included with these two different size tool rests which is a nice little feature and they drop into this well here on the banjo 
Uh, they tighten up very nicely using those little locking nuts and the banjo, like I said before, it moves around very smoothly and having the two different sizes is very, very useful. The banjo is really free floating once it's loose and so you really can move it around pretty well within the distance of the lathe and position it on all different angles for the work surfaces. So if you want to do bowls, you want to really go out to that full 8 inch size, you can do that. That smaller of the two, you're looking at about four and a half inches. As you can see here, about four and a half, four and a quarter inches. Yep. And the larger, I think it was about seven. Yeah, there it is, seven inches. So you have these two different size tool rests. Now the only downside to these tool rests that I've found so far is that this post. And this post seems to be measuring out a little less than a half inch. Now that seems fine, and I know that my calipers are calibrated the right way. And so measuring these posts, I'm seeing that basically we've got a little bit about uh, a half inch post on each one in the hole that also measures perfectly to a half inch. Well, the problem is, is that it seems to be that standard tool rest posts out there on the market, especially for aftermarket upgrades, tend to be five eighths of an inch or bigger. And the, most of your larger lathes are going to have up to one inch posts as well. So this is making it a challenge to find some aftermarket posts and some aftermarket tool rests, especially because I'm really interested in trying to make bowls. With that being said, I think this is going to be a great little lathe to play around with, to learn on, and I'm really glad that you guys are coming along with me on this journey of learning how to turn wood. Thanks for tuning in, and stay tuned for the next couple of videos. Appreciate it.